Arjun, that's a great lesson about what happens when you realize a dream. Would you do it again? Um, you mean this thing? Yeah, that thing. This thing. All right. So, uh, that's a great lesson about when you realize a dream. Okay. I think this is the lesson you were talking about. If not, you'll tell me what you want me to teach. Yes? Yes. All right. So, we're here at Pepe's Cafe in Key West. Um, the Florida Keys, can they see that? Yes. Boat trip itinerary. Yep. And um, it actually started on June 13th. We got on the boat and we went to Bimini. And it's the first time I've ever crossed the Gulf Stream. And I've been wanting to do this trip my whole life from Miami to Bimini, and then Bimini back to Miami, and then Miami down to Key West. And today, well, Oscar and Erica flew down yesterday to take the boat back to Miami with us, about 160 miles. Uh, so we're gonna spend the day just sort of diving and sightseeing and cruising back up north. And um, <clears throat> it was, and this has been a lifelong dream of mine. I've been boating my whole life and I've never been south of Duck Key. And um, it's about 75 miles north of here. And um, so Erica, you, the person holding the camera, they, Erica and Oscar were, when they got here last night, they they flew down and they were like, oh, you know, so how's it feel? You know, you realize your dream. And there's a song, I forgot the person who sang it, and the song goes, is that all there is? Because if that's all there is, I'll just keep dancing. And so, um, it was great. It was fun, it was interesting, it was exciting. But it wasn't the realization of a dream, or I guess it was the realization of a dream, but it was like a grown-up dream, as opposed, to the, as opposed to the immature dreams that so many people have. And, um, <clears throat> I think if I had done this 10 years ago, I would have been devastated by this experience. But now that I've been through the wars, so to speak, of building the business that we have, I've developed the entrepreneurial maturity and I'm able to appreciate that, you know, I don't get that excited about things anymore like I used to. And I also don't get brought down by hardly anything very much anymore. And um, I think there's, I think there's a, like a, a lesson about entrepreneurial maturity to realize that, you know, this practice, we're shooting a video. No um, it's just practice. It, it was just a practice trip is what it turned out to be. And I don't have to like, is that something, Arjun, that um, you think you, you guys could teach in, in the year-long program that we're thinking about doing, maybe? Well, we haven't decided whether we're going to do that program or not. Okay. That's something we're going to talk about today mm -hmm. on the way back to my home. Okay. But yeah, I mean, the concept is that... So the idea behind it, if we decide to do this year-long program, is that it's the practical application of mindset. Um, I love mindset, I love to study mindset, but it, you know, at some point studying mindset just becomes self-indulgent and it becomes distracting and it actually prevents you from doing the things you've got to do to build the business that affords you the life you wanna live. And um, there's practical applications of mindset that if you don't focus on the practical applications of mindset, it just becomes like an intellectual exercise with no real, you don't get any meat. You don't get any traction. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so we're talking about doing a year long series on the practical application of mindset in different areas of life. So you don't have this out of balance life where something pops up out of nowhere and just stop. But we haven't decided that. Well, that would be a really the realization that of this dream and then the realization that it turns out that it's a practice that is not 
Yeah, we could do, we could devote a week of the year to this concept, and, and the idea is that so just so you guys understand, the idea is that every week we would address a different practical application of mindset. So the the, the practical application of mindset to having domestic staff. Um, Erica and Oscar have, as long as we've known you guys, you've always had like a pretty robust domestic staff. Is that fair to say? Yes. Um, and that took some learning for us to learn how to allow ourselves to use the wealth that we've created to to employ a domestic staff that really liberates us, right? And you buy your freedom. But there's a practical application of mindset. You, 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 all the money in the world doesn't help you have that lifestyle if you don't let yourself use it, which is all mindset. Um, I mean, how do you guys get that mindset? I mean, you, you've had a staff, what, your whole life. Am I correct? Yeah. I mean, the tables have turned. Oh my God. Well, yeah, you know, a part of it is just, that's how we were born. You know, that's how you live in, in, Latin, Amer in Latin America. I mean, had two or three people in the house, a, um, a driver, a nanny, a cleaning lady, another lady that cleans. It's just how you live and you just behave in certain ways and you just make it part of your life. And in other parts of the world, that is just not normal, you know? but it's a certain way of going about it or thinking about it that allows you to do other things. And most people feel guilty, you know, about having somebody working when they are resting or thinking or doing something else. Or uncomfortable, uncomfortable. or awkward, or like, oh, you know, I, I can't be there while the staff is cleaning the house, or I have to be working hard to show them that I'm not some lazy, whatever. It's all mindset. Right. Or so who that, do I think I am, right? That I'm here just resting and they are working and that must be bad. Yeah, but you grew up in Latin America. Yes. Allie grew up in Latin America. And Allie, you did not grow up with a household staff. With one. With one. I didn't grow up Not a with, staff. You had a, a staff. housekeeper who came to your house once in a while. No, I, I had a housekeeper that came. Full time? Yeah, uh, full time, yeah. And uh, every day. That was um, kind of normal. Speak louder. That was kind of normal, and it was okay to be doing nothing and resting while somebody else was um, cleaning and, and doing anything else. I do know a lot of people, a lot of our members, that they clean the house before they make order for them for then the housekeeper to come and clean. Okay, but I don't want to turn this into like a whole referendum on who's holding this. I, I don't want to have the whole thing on, this isn't like a year of having a housekeeper. And the whole idea is that, you know, Argon, you and I have spoken a few times about how some things are given. In, in other words, you, you think people know how to do certain things when in reality they don't. And so, for example, why should I have insurance? Why should I consider, you know, how do I buy a car? How do I mortgage a house? And so how do we teach our kids from a practical point of view how to think about growing their life and improving their life and having a life that is more complete? And so this idea of making mindset practical, an applica a practical application to our daily lives is you know is worth gold for ourselves and for our family and what we can teach mm -hmm. our families and yeah. how important and how important is that it's oh. daily it never ends the moment that you stop thinking about it and studying it and actually using it you slide back oh yeah it's I mean we work on this stuff so all of us we work on this stuff all the time or it's the concept of continuous growth you never achieve nirvana it's always a moving target. Well, I guess that's kind of the point of where this whole thing started is that my quote unquote dream, it turns out right. it just- The this, first phase it, of- It turns out that it was just a practice run yeah. because For the I, next one. I learned that the way that I had dreamed of- Here. The way, that I had, the way that I had dreamed of doing this trip, I mean, the way I had dreamed of doing this trip is not really the way that I want to do this trip. 
But and, you didn't know. But I didn't know. I didn't know what I didn't know that I didn't know. And until you know, you until you to know and not to do is not to know. So I had studied the charts and I had studied the guide maps and I had studied the guidebooks and I had thought about it and dreamed about it and planned about it. And then the actual experience of it was like, wah, wah. It's, I mean, I don't want to say it was bad. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't like, maybe this would have been like a fantastic trip for me when I was 25. No, because this trip was with Tyke. I mean, we, we, we had, it was, it just, it was like, and we see this happening with the members all the time, right? I mean, Erica, you and I were just talking about this uh, like a couple weeks ago, about how many of our members, they achieve their dream, and then they fucking implode, and they sabotage their business, and they implode their business because they've achieved their dream, and they're like, I, th I thought everything was going to be perfect, and it's like, it's not. you, you got to have developed the entrepreneurial maturity. You know what I'm trying to say? Yes, absolutely. Will yeah. you add something to that? Yeah, I mean, they just, um, you know, just people get to whatever the dream is, 500,000, a million, two million, whatever, and they are just sitting there, and it's like, is this it? Like, this is not, you know, I I'm thought, not feeling I this I thought high. everything was going to be perfect. Right, I would never have another problem, I wouldn't have any other issues within my employees, and my family would be perfect. Like, I would is, feel realized. Yeah, I would feel... I mean, I feel actualized, fully yeah. actualized because yeah. I've achieved this arbitrary financial goal. And, I am there. I've what made I'm it. I've quote unquote made it. And we see this happening with our members, some of our members, not all, no, no, a few no. of our members, they get that too cool for school syndrome is like, I've made it. And then next thing you know, they start doing really fucked up shit and they fuck up their they business. They fuck it up so they can have the rush again and they can go in and fix it again, which is sometimes very sad to see that they have to break everything down so well, it's sad because it. they do this to their family, they right. do this to their staff, they do this to their clients, they just... And the stress and the, the so breaking anyway, down. Anyway, so, let me I don't even on. know what so we're... we were thinking about doing <laughs> this program because... The year-long program. The year-long program because it takes... Every day it takes work. You gotta work on the mindset, you gotta use it, and you gotta use it in everyday life. So... It can't just be an intellectual exercise. Exactly, right? it can't just be something that you think about and that you study. No, you gotta use it. You gotta use it and you gotta use it every day. You gotta use it. It's very easy to have a good mindset when everything is good. But at 5 a.m. in the morning when, when you wake up, when I wake up to write, like you have to have a really good mindset to wake up and to go and fucking do it and then start your day and then start your day when you, when, well, when you start. Well, how about the mindset of what do you do when a pandemic hits and you decide that mm -hmm. I'm gonna make an extra million dollars because of the pandemic and your whole staff got a hundred and more employees and they're all looking at you like, holy shit, are we all gonna lose our jobs? Yes, and, and they are all going bananas. And and you, you walk into a meeting and like, I've made the decision that I'm gonna make an extra million dollars because of the pandemic. And they say, how? And you say, I don't know how yet. I haven't figured that part out yet. The important part is they've made the decision. And we've made, I mean, when I say made an extra million dollars, I don't mean gross, I mean net. I mean, in the bank. Um, yeah, so that's, I don't even know where this conversation started from. You, I, I right, got my food, food in front of me. Can I just stop and eat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's eat. Thank okay. you. Okay, bye.